I love being in the canopy of the trees. We're about 60 feet above the ground. You have this beautiful panorama and then the lake beyond. It's pretty special. For me, the most beautiful time to be here is uh, in the winter, uh, just sitting here with the fire and then watching the snowfall. That's when this space is most magical. We're located in the province of Quebec and it's a, quite a remote area. It's about five kilometers off of the last road. So we're surrounded really just by forests and lakes. This is the last inhabited lake for quite a while. And I was very much looking for a steep piece of land. Uh, I like the idea of being up in the air. I've lived most of my life in apartments and I like uh, being far above the ground. The cabin is between 900 and 1,000 square feet. It's uh, about 100 feet long and it's tapering. So we're kind of lightening the load as we are suspended in the air. So that's one reason to have the form. But the other one is that to keep it long and skinny, it's just a very efficient way to lay out a couple of rooms. You know, we're living off the grid here. So the only energy we have is from solar. And so, um, you know, we have to make do with uh, maximizing daylight, especially, um, you know, solar gain, say for the winter months when we're here and, um, and cross ventilation in the, um, in the summer. So it's just kind of the obvious proportion to be using. Being off the grid, we had to, you know, figure out the most efficient ways um, to heat during the winter and to be able to have all of our utilities and everything working. Um, but even simple things like buying a high efficiency refrigerator, buying a washer dryer that's high efficiency, that they all take very little power. And being off the grid doesn't mean you have to compromise. You just have to temper your behavior a little bit. We have uh, 3,800 watts for solar collectors and a three kilowatt lithium battery. Um, and that provides us with sufficient service for the building. I've been waiting a very long time to uh, build this. It's moved in fits and starts simply because of uh, all kinds of technical logistics and uh, municipal logistics. With this uh, piece of land, we're required to be back uh, about a hundred feet from the shoreline for environmental reasons, which I think is great. Uh, but um, the issue is with this very steep piece of land, if I actually built 100 feet back, I would have done far more damage to the uh, hillside and to the local trees. And so I spoke to the municipality and said, hey, look, if you let me have a tiny, tiny foundation at 75 feet back from the water, and the house is going to be elevated quite high, about uh, six stories, uh, can I cantilever the nose of the cabin? So there's a, a fraction of the uh, disruption to the to the ground below, to the trees, the water line, and the uh, wildlife communities that are here. We have very sophisticated digital software, but nothing works better than a physical model. And so what you're looking at here is is the last physical model. It would have been, I don't know, 15 probably before this. Again because we said, hey, look, we're just going to put a tiny little foundation here, and then the rest is going to extend, but because it's so high up, it's not going to interfere with the water line below. They were in agreement with it. And it was it was kind of pretty sweet. Like first, you know, they're looking at it, and then, you know, there's a bunch of counselors there, and the mayor of the municipality, and they're all kind of grinning, thinking this is, this is kind of nuts. And they, I think they just thought that it was never going to happen, so they approved it. But I have a wonderful relationship with all the folks at the municipality because they've been super supportive. But it is true that the whole thing began as a kind of, uh, yeah, I don't know, implausible, implausible uh, venture. We decided we would really like to try to experiment with cross-laminated timber. We thought that we should try to push the limits of the material. And so it's basically, it's like an enormous piece of plywood. And so being a thin material, the pieces I'm using are only about this dimension. So it would be impossible for the material to span 50 feet between the front foundation and back on its own. And it's very much like I use the analogy, if you have a piece of paper, it has no structural rigidity, but all you have to do is if you fold it, suddenly it's very rigid. 
And so something with minuscule dimension becomes structurally sound. And so the underside of the, the cabin has this V shape, and then the roof is exactly the mirror of that. And so it allows the greatest structural span with the smallest amount of materials. And so for starters, there is the, um, you can see here the, uh, the folded roof plane, which gives rigidity, whether it's in this form or this form. So you're entering at the low point, right? And it's going up here, but this wall is going down. So it's more geometrically uh, complicated than a, a standard ridge beamed palm. So this is the foundation in the back, which is also um, a very small volume, which is holding the solar batteries. This is in concrete, and this is the steel mass, which is, again, about uh, 20 meters, 60 feet tall, which is sitting on a very small concrete foundation. In a conventional home, this would have been 250 linear feet of a perimeter of a concrete foundation. But by not having any of that, by just having this small piece here and here, the use of concrete is a fraction compared to what it would have been. So being elevated like this is a means to produce the use of a material. The question that comes up frequently is, well, isn't your floor going to be cold because there's no basement? So to manage the temperature, the two most important things are air tightness and a well-insulated roof, right? So the cross-laminated timber is so precisely milled and window technology has become so advanced that the air tightness factor is extremely high and we do have insulation above the CLT of the roof so keeping the heat inside in the winter is not an issue and there's a, a, a large pocket of air underneath the floor slab which works to help with insulating it. Yeah I'll, I'll walk you through the cabin so it begins obviously outdoors we have a ramp which is about uh, 10 meters 30 feet and we uh, so deliberately made it a ramp so it's accessible to everyone, which is also why it's all on one level as opposed to being uh, multiple levels. And the ramp is kind of an, an open grill for a couple of reasons. One, it's non-skid. It also means that rain, snow, ice falls through, so it's accessible all through the year. Uh, and then, then we have a, a small uh, kind of porch area, which is where we would leave our snowshoes and skis in the winter because, again, it's five kilometers that's not being plowed in the winter. And we're here every weekend, and that's kind of the way we get in. Uh, we put little packs on the dog and put packs on ourselves. Everybody uh, has to, uh, you know, do their share. And uh, so then you enter. The first space really is the, a very large closet. And the second space is a multi-purpose room. So uh, I guess most importantly for human use, it has two bunks. So uh, the, the cabin can easily fit six people very comfortably, could probably fit eight in a pinch. Um, so in this first little room is also the space for the mechanical guts of the building. We have the water heater, we have the inverter for the solar uh, panels, and then there's a washer dryer, the kind you might have in a boat that kind of does everything all in one unit. And, you know, just storage for kind of immediate necessities. And the, uh, the next space is a guest room, which is also my office. I mean, it's, you know, it's a pretty rare weekend when I don't have to do a little bit of work here. It's also the one room where there's a internet booster, which is uh, our only hope to, uh, to connect with the outside world. So it's also, um, the, I guess, the mothership for communication with the, with the city. And the next room is the bathroom, where we have uh, uh, this is an antique door knocker, and uh, it's actually a, a far more generous uh, bathing area than we have in the city. So it's a, kind of like a little mini spa here, which is the reward for uh, you know when you uh, trek in in the winter. And then the next space is a sleeping. It was it's kind of the master bedroom, I guess. So it was envisioned at, initially to be completely closed in with walls, floor to ceiling, and then we decided that was uh, not desirable because we already have the view, there's plenty of ventilation, and so in a way it's a nook, but it, it is the primary uh, bedroom area. So in this area is the uh, primary storage for clothing, sheets, towels, linens. So this is the primary storage area for the entire cabin. And so now we're moving into the kitchen, living room, dining area. 
uh, and games room, I guess. And you can see that at this point, it becomes obvious that we're uh, really starting to be elevated. So, you know, we're at the level of the trees and there's birds and animal life down below us. And, um, and it's also at the point where the, uh, the hillside started dropping off. So you can see that um, we're even above some of the trees. And I should say too that the trees around us are deciduous. So what happens in the summer is that the trees are blocking a lot of the solar gain because we're facing south. And we do have blinds that have a reflective backing to keep the sun out in the winter the leaves are obviously gone and we rely considerably on the solar gain. The primary heating system for the cabin is a high efficiency wood stove. The kitchen is pretty small but completely suits our purposes. We're off grid so the electricity from the solar panels provides the uh, the power for the refrigerator and freezer and also really important is the dishwasher. Uh, we have a, a well, which also means that even in the winter, we have uh, fresh water coming in. And then we have the storage wall, which has all kinds of things that we're using um, routinely. And for an emergency, if it was incredibly bitter cold, we do have a backup uh, propane heater in the bathroom and here and then also next to the heater is uh, Jethro's uh, trough I call it. Jethro who's a 160 pound uh, Leon Berger and um, his manners are uh, in development let's say. And uh, next to that we have uh, I don't know the beginning of the collection of antique furniture that comes primarily from Antonio's family. This is our small dining area and uh, it's a double-decker table basically. So there's the eating surface but then it lifts off and there's a place where the puzzles live underneath. Uh, so again that's just an idea of saving space so we don't have to keep moving aboard with the puzzles while, um, while they're being made. And then we have the, the lounging part of the house, our sofa which is um, indestructible. Uh, and uh, covered with a, a waterproof fabric so that Jethro, again, the dog, is going to be able to go on there, whether he is being permitted or not. And the living room wall has some really beautiful First Nations art from British Columbia. And then we have the high efficiency wood stove, which uh, it, it's plenty enough to keep the cabin warm. Um, even in, on the coldest days. And then uh, this wood storage box is custom made, which also has a place for kindling and then also just paper to get things going. Uh, in the summer, we spend as much time here as we can. In the winter, we come up every weekend. And being remote, distance wise, you have to put some physical effort into it. In the summertime, we battle bugs. There are horse flies and deer flies and mosquitoes and black flies, and that's a bit of a frustration. And there are times when you, know, you walk in and if it's minus 30 outside, it's a little brisk to get things fired up and to get things warmed up. But, you know, four hours, the place is usually toasty warm, just using the um, wood fireplace. Growing up at a cottage with my grandparents, my favorite thing is still the same thing. A bunch of people for dinner and after dinner's over, everybody plays games for the night. It's just a real treat to have a group of people around a table and have a lot of fun. It's kind of like the simple part of life. Subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and please share this video if you liked it. You can also find out more about the Moore CLT cabin and other projects on the Karyuk Architects website and Instagram. Thanks for watching.